Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the installation of our roof rack for the 80 series Land Cruiser and the Lexus LX450. So to get started, you can kind of lay everything out like this. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have two side rails, eight of these crossbars, as well as a front and rear fairing. And then you should also have eight mounts with the smaller mounting clamp style bracket and the edge trim for your front and rear fairings. So what we found is the easiest place to start is getting the crossbars bolted in to the side rails using the quarter inch button heads along with the small washers that go along with those. You wanna make sure as these are going in that you're using a little bit of thread lubricant just to keep the stainless bolts from seizing into the aluminum crossbars over time. And then one thing to point out on the crossbars is that we machined in one end here a nice little cutout to accept a T-nut so that you can slide them in and mount all your accessories and gear. So with those, we typically just make sure that they're all facing up and the same direction, usually to the driver's side, but that's kind of personal preference. So then just start at one end, grab a crossbar and a couple of those bolts and start bolting the crossbars in Typically you can just kind of center them into the slots and lightly snug them up for now. So then to tighten those, you're just gonna need a 5 30 seconds hex. And like we said, you can just snug that in place. Go ahead and do that all the way down one side, then you can jump to the other side and do the same thing. Okay. So once you get all your crossbars installed and your rack looks like this, go ahead and grab your front fairing along with the provided edge trim. Now this, we're simply going to kind of stretch out from point to point here. We'll cut it off and then press it up on this leading edge of the fairing. You can cut this using tin snips, wire cutters like I have here. You're just gonna need something that can cut metal because this is an aluminum impregnated seal. Go ahead and just mark that with your thumb and then you can cut it right off. You will want to save the cut end as we'll use that on the rear fairing in just a moment. And then you just wanna make sure once you've cut this, if any of that aluminum is sticking out of the end that you get it peeled out of there and thrown away so that it doesn't make contact with the fairing or the paint once installed. Once you have it cut to length, just start at one end and using a little bit of pressure, push that up onto the fairing. Once you get that pressed on, the fairing can be installed to the rack. It's simply gonna slide between the two side rails here. And then you can start bolting that in with the same quarter 20 button heads and washers you used on the crossbars. However, this time you'll be installing the provided serrated flange nuts on the inside of the fairing. Now we're just gonna be doing the top and bottom bolt on this front fairing for now, and we'll show you why in just a minute. So once you have all the bolts started on both sides, you can pull up on the fairing, make sure it's at the top of its slot, and then snug up at least one of these bolts temporarily. So after that, you can grab that cut end that we told you to save along with the rear fairing. And here on the radius end, you're just gonna wanna place this roughly in the center. You can measure it out or eyeball it, that's kind of personal preference. But then go ahead and push it in place. Once you have that done, this can install just like the front fairing did. You'll put it between the side rails, install the bolts, slide it all the way to the top, and snug it up. So next you'll be installing the mounting brackets to the side rails. The bracket's gonna look just like this. They're gonna step outward with the nut toward the inside. And then the bracket itself is gonna mount inside of the rail and bolt in place again with quarter inch button head hardware. You're gonna go ahead and install all eight mounts 
and just leave the hardware loose at this time. So now that we have the rack assembled, we do need to go do some disassembly on the vehicle and get the factory rack and roof rails off of that roof. If yours is not equipped with that rack, then you're ready to install this to the vehicle at this time. So to get the factory rack section removed, it's just gonna be held in with two Phillips head screws at each corner. So you can go ahead and pull all of those out really quick and this should just lift off right along with these plastic feet. Once you have that factory rack section out of the way, you're also gonna to wanna to remove these center roof rails. So these are just another Phillips head screw at each end. That can be pulled out, which allows the plastic cap to be removed. I already did the other end of this rail just to be able to show you how this goes. And once you have those out, you're gonna to need to slide these all of the way off their mounting track and remove them from the vehicle. So with the rack and the rails out of the way, you're gonna to wanna to clean everything up the best you can. And then you'll be grabbing these fine thread five millimeter screws from your hardware pack, along with some RTV sealant. Now, what we're gonna do here is just put a little bit of RTV into each of these holes so that the bolt has to pass through it as it threads in, sealing all of these holes off as they will not be used to install our rack. Then with a three millimeter hex, you can tighten these up. Then if you have any excess left over, you can always wipe that area clean. You should have plenty both in the threads and under that bolt head to keep things sealed. Go ahead and repeat that process on all the remaining holes. So once you have all the bolts in the roof sealed up and tightened in place, you can go ahead and grab that already assembled rack and place it down here on the roof. So what you're looking for as that rack sits down in place is the mounting brackets to sit down in this outer rain channel along this outside edge of the roof. Now once you get the rack set up here on the roof, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of these are sitting down in that rain channel and kind of pulled toward the outside edge. And then you gotta be looking at front to rear placement. So you wanna make sure that you're not too close here. If you're too far back, it'll kind of look funny along this radius on the front end. And then in the rear, you might have to get up top and take a look at the roof line and make sure you're not so far back that it's overhanging that gap where the rear hatch opens up. Once you're happy with the placement, go ahead and grab the outer clamshell bracket. This 90 degree flange is going to be the bottom. And then you're gonna need one of the 5 16 button heads with a washer from your hardware pack to go into each of those. You're gonna to wanna to get all of these started by hand before tightening anything up. So then once you get all of these started by hand and you're happy with the rack placement on the roof, you can grab a 3 16 hex and tighten all of these up. So then once you get all those tight to the rain channel, you can grab your 5 30 seconds hex and come back and tighten up all the side rail mounting bolts to the mounts. So this is also where you're gonna be able to make the rack height adjustment. So here you wanna pay attention to the crossbar clearance between that crossbar and the roof, as well as just the appearance of the rack and the way it looks while it's sitting up there. Once you're happy with the height of that rack, just work your way around and tighten these up. So once you have the height adjusted and everything tightened down there, you're ready to set the height of the front and rear fairings. Now that is just gonna be adjusted by loosening up this side hardware that allows you to slide this up and down. You can just push that down tight to the roof and make sure it's even on both sides before tightening all that up and installing the final bolt. Now the reason we had you install just two bolts here earlier is that you can come back you can take this bottom one out now 
and flip this back out of the way. And then what we're gonna recommend is installing this clear paint protection film between the front edge of the fairing and that edge trim and the painted roof surface just to protect that over time as any dust, dirt, debris might get caught in there while you're out driving. Once you get that film installed, you can go ahead and flip this back down and kind of do as we just said, finish installing the hardware and push this down tight to make your final adjustments there. You'll do the same thing in the rear of the vehicle. You'll just be using a shorter section of that film where that edge trim was placed in the center of that rear fairing. Once you have all that adjusted, it's a good idea to go back and just double check that all your hardware is tight to complete your install. So if you guys have any questions about this roof rack install or any other Victory product, feel free to reach out to us. You can send us an email at info at victory4x4.com or give us a phone call at 269-459-8447.